Hello everybody and welcome to our first introductory lesson on the subject of company law. What we're going to do in this lesson is introduce the nature of this topic, talking about the nature of business forms, i.e. various different business structures which can exist, talk about the sort of pros and cons and the characteristics of each of these different business structures before turning over to looking at the company specifically. And then we will finish by simply outlining the scope of this series of lessons, taking a look at what the kind of topics we're going to be examining in this subject course on company law. We will also talk about what is not being covered in this series of lessons, because company law exists and has a number of different sort of what we could describe as subtopics, which we'll get to in the at the end of this lesson and talk about the things that we're not going to be covering because we'll be covering those in their own series of lessons in the future. So let's begin by thinking about the concept of company law and the relationship that is had between the company the idea of the company and this idea of business. So essentially, when we talk about a company, we're talking about something which is some kind of entity which exists as a, a principled extension of broader business arrangements. So if one wishes to engage themselves in business activity, one of the ways and one of the most arguably one of the most common ways in which that can be done is through the creation of operation and management of a, a company, a corporation. And there are various advantages to having a company uh, for your business arrangements and, and utilizing company regulation uh, through uh, and to use business uh, or to, to operate business through that of a company. And that is essentially why the company is such an important entity and such an important legal creation. So with that being said, it should be noted, of course, that the company itself, the idea of a company, is not the only form of business structure which may exist. There are other kinds of business structures which exist out there, and we will talk about those in a second. Um, but for the most part, when we talk about the study of company law, we're going to be focusing on this idea of the company. And the reason for this is because the company is a very distinct and very clearly defined entity within law. And so as a result of which, we can really delimit our topic and our and our understanding of company law to just that of the company as a business structure rather than other kinds of business structures which may exist. So given the fact that there are numerous business structures which are available to those who are looking to operate and to run a business, um, we should note that the suitability of a particular business structure will depend on uh, some uh, characteristics of that business. Firstly, it could depend, for example, on the size of the business. It could depend on the structure of the business. It could also depend on the kinds of things that the business is looking to achieve in terms of um, its essential operation, what kind of business it is. Now, the first and most simple kind of business structure is known as the sole trader, or sometimes it can be described in textbooks as the sole proprietor. This is the simplest and easiest to manage of all of the various business structures which are available. And the reason for this is because the sole trader is simply an individual who is wanting to operate a business and is operating that business as themselves and their activity is their activity as a business. Simple as that. They are the business. The sole trader is that individual. When that individual retires or dies, then the sole trader, the business dies with that person or, or retires with that person. So essentially, the reason why the sole trader is so popular and so um, and so useful to many people is because of the simplicity and ease at which it takes to actually manage the various business structure uh, that that, arra that is arranged within the sole tradership. So, for example, the reason why there are business structures that are sole traders is because they are useful for those who are just single individuals who want to operate a business and want to operate their business individually. This is not to suggest that a sole trader can only be a single individual, however. You could have sole traders whereby they take on and expand by taking on employees. Uh, and this can sometimes happen through, uh, for example, um, actual trades. So tradesmen such as such, such as plumbers and electricians, they often operate through the uh, system of a sole trader, but they can often take on employees and or apprenticeships, etc., etc. But 
it doesn't suggest that the sole trader has to be a single individual on their own and can never take on and, and, and have employees. But for the most part, a sole trader will uh, be a single individual. When you have more than one individual, not necessarily as an employee, but more than one individual who runs and operates a business, you have what is known as a partnership. And the partnership is a simple type of business structure which may exist where there are two or more people who wish to engage together in the establishment of a business. It's not a single businessman or woman and then an employee of that individual. It is two people or more who are both going to run, operate and manage the business. Now, in law, at least in England and Wales, there are three different kinds of partnership. We have the traditional understanding of the partnership, we have the limited partnership, and we have the limited liability partnership. Now, we are, for this series of lessons and for the next slide, are only going to focus on the first of these types of business structure. If we do business law on the Business Academy in a future lesson's time, we might get on to looking at the distinction between these three kinds of partnership. But for the most part, individuals will operate through a traditional partnership structure. Now, according to the Partnership Act of 1890, specifically Section 1, Subsection 1, a partnership uh, in the traditional setting, a traditional partnership, is the relation which subsists between persons carrying on a business in common with a view to profit. So, uh, the things that we see here show that there are certain characteristics of um, of, of a traditional partnership structure. It is a, a business structure and it is the business structure which subsists between persons. So there's more than one person, so two or more individuals, and they are carrying on the business with the common view to profit. So they are, they, they are establishing a business for the purpose of commerce, for the purpose of, of creating commercial profit. And it gives a very good definition of a partnership. Uh, essentially, it's a business structure, which is similar to that of the sole trader, but there are multiple individuals who are involved with that particular uh, enterprise. Now, the final thing that we're going to talk about here is the idea of the company, which is, of course, what this series of lessons is going to be talking about. Now, the company is separate from the sole trader. And it is separate from the idea of a traditional partnership because in order for a company to be formed, it has to go through a process known as incorporation. Now, the reason why this is the case, the reason why incorporation is necessary for the creation of a company is because a company exists as a separate legal entity to the people who created, run, operate and manage it. So whereas a sole trader is just the individual who is doing the business. So, for example, Joe Bloggs, who wants to set up a sole trader, who wants to be a sole trader and they are an electrician, they are the business. When they retire, the business retires with them. That is, it is just them. A company is different because a company, through the process of incorporation, establishes itself as a separate legal entity. Um, so you could have an individual who creates a company and then that process of incorporation leads to the company being separate to the person such that if that person then retires or that person um, then passes the company on the company stays the same the company will remain as the company uh, while other people can come and go within that business structure so essentially incorporation is the process of creating a new legal entity and that this new legal entity is that of the company there are numerous types of companies. We will see in the next lesson the different types of companies that can exist. But the advantage of a company is it allows for various liabilities to be limited to the company itself and not necessarily those running the firm. So one of the things that is a general uh, fact of business life is that for the most part, a business will eventually take on and incur uh, debts. They might take on debts for various different reasons. Now, the advantage of having a company is that because a, a company is often a limited liability, it means that those debts are debts that are incurred by the company as separate to those that are incurred by the company director. And therefore, the director may not be as liable or may have limited liability for the debts that the company incurs because of the fact that there is this separation between the person who is running the company and the company itself. 
So with that being said, let's talk about the scope of this series of lessons. Um, as the title suggests, because we're doing company law, this is going to be an examination of the law relating to the regulation and legal operation of a corporation, of a company. And with this, in this regard, we're going to be dividing this into six main sections. The first section is just going to be a general introduction to business and company law. This means that we're going to talk about the types of business form, which is what we did in this lesson. We're going to talk about the nature of the company, the different types of company which can exist, and the various principles of company law which exist as well. This then ties into the next section, which is going to take those principles of, of company law and, and run with them and really examine some of the consequences of those principles. So we're going to talk about the fact that we have principles such as corporate personality, separate corporate personality, the idea of incorporation, the concept of limited liability, and the ways in which this leads to the expression of uh, the existence of corporate groups and group structures and enterprise groups. All of these factors and all of these principles then will tie into section three, which is going to be focusing on this idea known as the corporate veil. The idea that when you have limited liability, it is almost like you have put a veil between you and the corporation, such that debts and uh, various liabilities are incurred onto the company and you are protected from that. And so essentially what a subject examining the corporate veil will be looking at is talking about essentially the concept itself, talking about the history of how this has been viewed in law, and then talking about the processes, procedures, justifications and rationales for the lifting and or piercing of the corporate veil i.e. under what circumstances can a court or can it be uh, can it be recognized by statute that the corporate veil is lifted such that there is no longer this divide between the company and the individuals running said company after that, we'll start to talk about the structure of corporations themselves, focusing on the idea of the company constitution, examining basic themes, the nature of the articles of association of a company, and the importance of the corporate contract. Continuing on, we will also talk about the idea of corporate management in section 5, the management of a company, the structure of management, and a very brief introduction to corporate governance. Then finally, in section six, we will talk about the directors or uh, the duties of directors, should I say. So talking about the director as a fiduciary position, the fiduciary responsibility that a director has towards their company, uh, general duties to directors, as well as this idea of accessory liability. So that is the structure of this series of lessons. But what is important is that we are not including a number of other elements of company regulation and company law. And the reason for that is because these will be a series of lessons in and of themselves. So, for example, we are going to do a series of lessons on corporate governance in more detail in future lessons time. In addition to that, we will also be doing a series of lessons on corporate insolvency law. So the idea of when a company um, essentially cannot uh, cannot pay their debts when they fall due. And so the process of winding up the company, bringing the company to an end. And then we'll also talk about in a separate series of lessons, the law of corporate finance, the laws regulating the distribution of shares, the creation of new shares, the distinction between equity and debt obligations of a corporation, all the financial elements of company law will all be done in that series of lessons as well. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you uh, stay tuned for the next series of lessons. We're going to have a going to have a great time talking about various different elements of company law uh, and I'll see everybody in the next lesson.